Thank you once again for tuning in for TI7 Dota 2 C Qualifiers. Once again, I'm here, Faraz, with Master Raman and Pinda. Guys, we just finished a match between Mineski and Faceless. Faceless took it. But next up, we have Happy Feet going up against Mineski. Now, we talked a little bit about it. Here are the stats of both teams. Guys, throw me some comments, some thoughts. Uh, I mean, looking at the KD of Happy Feet, it doesn't yeah. look so good. And we know that Master Raman, you mentioned they're technically out of this tournament. Yeah. So what can we expect to see in this fight? <laughs> We're definitely expecting a Lina. <laughs> you can see Lina's like... <laughs> the I highlight. Know, I Lina's mean, everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Lina's everywhere. It's, it's a great hero. It's a top I'm, meta hero if, right now. If I'm happy, I'm hoping them to pick... Uh, Sad feet? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pick all the fun hero, and you know. Just I mean, have fun? Just yeah, have fun. And I mean, uh, you mentioned this before, Master Raman, that Happy Feet actually has some ex Mineski players. Yeah, they now, have once again, jewels. Uh, we know that unfortunately, Skate Masters, they um, forfeited their match, yeah. but I don't think Happy Feet is going to do it. So they're still going to play their match even though they're out. So knowing that they have some ex Mineski players, is that going to help them go against the new Mineski roster? I don't the know. The current one? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm pretty sure they don't have any revenge or grudge about, about, about it. So, it's, so I don't think they... I mean, if Happy Feet beat Maneski, basically they are throwing Maneski away. <laughs> I mean, deny Maneski any chance to go to TI7. So, but it's, it's not up to Happy Feet. It's up to Maneski. Happy Feet to just play their games, their normal games, uh, try their best, because that's what the professional players do. Mm. So, but it's up to Maneski. Maneski cannot uh, take this as a... Uh, cannot uh, look... Uh, down on Happy Feet because Happy Feet is not that bad before. They have a potential. Uh, maybe this for this qualifier they have problems uh, not adapting with JO or something because J -O, they recently joined them. So, but yeah, I'm, expect, I, I'm, um, I'm expecting a good game. Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Salman. Pinna, what about you? What do you expect to see? I'm just waiting for the draft. <laughs> <laughs> You're just waiting for the draft? Well, before we jump into it, I want to no, give you your... I think Mineski double, uh, definitely has an upper hand in this one. Why is that? Is it, I mean, uh, obviously we know that they had better performance, but Happy Feet is not a team to be underestimated as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, can't say much, actually. Like, let's stick to ramen statements for now. Okay, what about Mineski? Okay, let's talk about Mineski. Uh, what kind of play style should they be going for? Should they be trying out new stuff, experimenting, or should they be going standard meta? No, they shouldn't experiment anything. They should just bring their eye game and win. I think they should just concentrate more on the drafting, how to go about it. Like, it's not easy when it comes to draft, definitely. When your enemy team throws out an, an unexpected hero, and then it's really... But I think if they have the right draft, if they can... If they feel comfortable with those heroes, they can definitely pull it off. Definitely, and I think we'll get to see it because the draft is already ready for us to view. So we're going to be taking like, a look at picks and bans for Happy Feet and Mineski. So we already have two picks on the oh, Mineski see, yeah, side. This is, this is, okay, sorry. The Darkseer Savan. Yeah, they picked Darkseer, which is a great hero. Now this hero... You look can, really pumped, by the way. Yeah, so. I am, because I forgot to mention, like, you know, in the last match, what they could have done is, like, picked Darkseer instead of Bara, like, probably. Because Darkseer with the vacuum pump is great because it sets up the fight for Sven when it comes to gang fights. It's like with that pump, if with the vacuum, if it hits, it's like... Storm Hammer, like just imagine, vacuum four man, Storm Hammer hits, God strength. It's it's gonna it's be perfect. like yeah, it's it's, it's like perfect Dota, but at least it's there. It's the, that's the hero they should have gone for in the last match against Faceless. All right, Master Ramen, what do you this think is, this, this is Sven really is gonna be? Is it gonna be a support Sven, or I don't think there's there's a mind game here, but I I hoping Happy Fit to ban all the Mushi heroes so we can see. <laughs> You're hoping so we can see Mushi playing a, a different hero. A new hero. Yeah, no, maybe not not King of Pain, not Lina. Maybe not the not the typical, typical Mushi favorites. Yeah, because it's quite boring to see the same hero over and over. So we want to see a new hero for Mushi. Maybe. I definitely agree with you. Or right. forcing Mushi to play a new <laughs> hero. I, I hope we can see Mushi pick out some of his uh, pocket. Pocket picks as well. Uh, yeah. On Happy Feet side, however, okay. we got Sand King, also Witch Doctor. What do you guys think about those picks? Waiting for a core heroes, now they need a mid, a core, another support yeah. or off. That is quite quite fast banned by Mineski, banning Razor yeah, and Yeah, it's, it's good thing that they banned Lishrag because Mineski would have gone to this, uh, with the same uh, draft like they won the last game. So the Happy Feet definitely did their homework. So, see, they're, on, they're, ban they're banning Shaq <laughs> they, Pick they, me they, <laughs> 
They're trying to ban all those uh, push strat heroes like sh Shaman. It's all, it's all physical damage, so they're You're trying right. to cut down on this physical damage as much. I mean, they did, uh, Minesi did lose the last game, but they did play pretty well, so I think uh, it's good no, for Happy Feet not uh, to underestimate them. They did, yeah. Just they needed something for this one, that's all. So, Happy Feet, it's. They can see it coming that Minuskis, they definitely want to go for that physical um, damage type of heroes. So Minuskis just has to fix something else in this case. Minuskis need to get ready for the tiebreaker soon after they this. Could, they yes. could go for, is Slaughter been banned? Oh no, but uh, Docs here. So. And I think, um, as I remember, we talked about this before as well. well I think we're, oh wow, Queen of Pain. Uh, that's actually great. Pain. It's standard. Yeah, which doctor is going to have a hard time with Quill? Maybe Minisky uh, try, try to see what's wrong in the previous game and try to play it in this game. Change Lone it up, Druid. right? Yeah, try to change it up. Lone Druid. The first, probably the first Lone Druid we've seen in the series so far. Yeah, I think this is the, the first Kira. time we've seen it. Oh, this is great. What about Mineski's fourth pick? I mean, we've seen quite a few. The Kira's, yeah. Yes, quite quite a few times. The I think maybe twice. Hero. It's a great initiator. I mean, they not initiator, but it's great. Nothing. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, so it's been a, it's been good yeah. when they use it. The it's great. Rate. It's great. It's like we're talking about perfect Dota in case of Mineski. If it does happen, like it's gonna be an easy game. Like you see, uh, but the follow up has to be right. It has to be right on point. Like right on point. If there's no proper follow-ups, then this may fail. But so far, it looks good. Like Quop pick is also great. It's uh, it's gonna pop out uh, Witch Doctor pretty much easily. But but they have Lone Druid now, so that kind of changes things. Yes, we we talked about this before. It doesn't matter if you have the perfect draft. If you can't execute the the plan, yeah, it will not work. Yeah, that too. Because uh, in in this kind of level, tempo is very important. I mean, to get the first, uh, the first core item, the second core item, so you need to make sure your core to um, to meet the minimum tempo for the for the item build. Otherwise, otherwise the hero will become useless late game. Definitely. So, uh, this should be an easy game for Minesky, I guess. But we we'll see what what is Happy Fit answers to the current lineup of Minesky. Uh, maybe they try. Maybe they. they wow. Okay, they pick jungle. Okay. Mm. Now they they need they need a mid hero. Yes. No, exactly. I mean Lundu could go. Lundu will go safe lane, I guess, and then Senki will be off lane. Chen we see a Chen like. Just there. I haven't seen Chen play in ages, actually. I so still like Minuski's picks though. It's it's very easy to execute. It's like it's standard picks. It's a it's a great lineup, but uh, cross. I mean, it balances the draft. Yeah. Happy Feet, on the other hand, like Chen and. Uh, what Lundru. kind of what kind of play style would we be expecting from Happy Feet with the picks so far? That's what I can't I can't tell. Like the, it's Lone Root is like really farm dependent, and they really can't push early. It's it's gonna be really hard. Whereas uh, Mineski could just you know spam the skills on and on, and uh, wouldn't matter because they have Jakira as well. It's a great like disabler. It has the ice blast. Unless the Londo is a range build up, I mean the, the hero is the main, not the bear. Because they, they need because it's very weird for the bear to be the main, the main damage dealer because they have Sven. Basically, Sven can just kill the bear in the like few few hits. What do you guys think about the bans? I was actually hoping Minasuke go for Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker? But yeah, Again? they just banned it. They banned it themselves actually. Okay, we still have one more ban before we move on to the last picks for both Happy Feet and Mineski. Um, Mineski need another support for now. Which support yeah. would, be, would be most suitable for Mineski? Pinda? Anything? <laughs> like that. Throw it to Pinda. <laughs> Pinda. Come on, Pinda. Come on. <laughs> Tell us what you think. Pudge? <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite hero, right? Pudge? I would love to oh. see a punch. <laughs> me too, man. Me too. Okay. I mean, we Father did say Meepo and we saw a yeah. Meepo, so. Okay, the, for the f Fingers like crossed. It's really. Happy Feet's really unpredictable at this point. Like, I didn't really expect them to pick. Um, Necrophos. Necrophos. Oh. Carry Nescophos. Meet Nescophos, I guess. It will definitely lock down Quap and Sven. It's great. It's, it's, it's actually a great pick. I'm still thinking how they're going to catch Queen of Pain here. With, uh, it's quite hard because they only it's gonna have, be tough. 
They only have Sam King and Wish Doctor uh, to stop yeah, wish, um, Queen of Pain, which is I think I think is not enough. And and imagine if Sam King comes, Wish Doctor comes, Ben can just wreck them. Like Death Ward is not gonna do much when you know. Like Swen has war cry, so I don't know how which doctor is gonna play in Happy Feet. I wish they went for like something hero, like more executable, like Silencer, which would be which would have been more effective against Mineski's draft right now. But they went for which doctor. I'm pretty sure they had like a different lineup in mind prior to picking um, Lone Road and Chen, I guess. But I mean, to be fair, which doctor was picked first, so yeah, they wouldn't yeah. have the idea. Um, last pick coming up from Mineski. Guys, before what it goes live, do you have any ideas what it's going to be? Just pick I.O. I.O.? Yeah. I.O. Spend, would be great. Yeah, actually I.O. would so be great. So can just wreck every yeah. hero of Actually, Raman's right. I.O. would be great in this. Like, it gives the mobility. Oh! oh. Ben's support. <laughs> Ben's support? We didn't see that. <laughs> Alright, guys. I guess it's down to predictions. Pinda, happy feet or... I like, I like to be honest, I like Mineski's draft. It's very easy to execute and gyro, it's, it's going to be fun to see a gyro in this game. So, it's like Chen and Lone Root, same, it's, it depends okay. actually, but... What about you? Yeah, definitely Mineski. Mineski? Yeah. Alright, it's going to be Mineski. Three Mineskis, guys. We have Brian and Fitri. Oh, sorry, we got Basecape and Godot. Guys, it's nice to see you. Take it away. Thanks so much to our panel. It's great to be here. Uh, the panel didn't see the support Sven coming, but one person that did is sitting right next it's me. to me. It's, it's Godot. <laughs> he called it out, uh, at least as an as a opportunity for them here. And they round things out with the Gyrocopter. So they get some good burst magical damage against the Necrophos, give them some more wave clear against the Chen as well. Whose draft do you like overall, Darcy? I do like Mineski's lineup. They have played something very similar in the very first game uh, of the standards, and they did a gyrocopter a carry, they baited out the Sven to become a carry, but then they switched it up, mixed it up, the opponents didn't realize it was going to be a support, and then they did a roaming Sven plus a Luna. We're going to be si seeing something very similar to this this game, but the gyrocopter pick here suits even better because they need some team fight, they need some ways to clear the creeps because we're looking at a push lineup or a tempo lineup in the mid game by the facing side. I'm oh, sorry, the hat feet side. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean the the gyrocopter. They, they don't get the Sven synergy necessarily with the Dark Seer, but they do get the gyrocopter uh, synergy with the Dark Seer. Looks like they should be able to fight early on. That little bit of extra sustain, uh, just coming out from the mech on the the Dark Seer for the gyrocopter, definitely going to be very helpful. And I mean that's the one other thing about Happy Feet's lineup is that they have a little bit of burst, but not the most reliable ways to set up for the scythe. So if you survive the scythe because of a mech or because of a glimmer cape or something like that, then all of a sudden this gyrocopter can just completely take over the fight. He's going to be loaded up with an ion shell, he's going to be surged a lot of the time. Uh, it's going to be pretty scary for, for Happy Feet, but I mean, I think these two teams have scrimmed a decent amount, so Happy Feet probably feeling fairly well prepared for this. They are, I believe, already mathematically eliminated from yep, uh, playoff correct. contention, but... They're two and six right now to a five and three by Mineski. So Mineski's got a very high chance to get into the playoffs. Um, not into the top one anymore as we got TNC and Fnatic, which will be our final game of the day. To okay. We're going to jump forward here one. onto the same thing. Hasn't skilled up anything just yet. Might be able to burst strike away, but that's not going to be far enough. He's already been slowed down, and that is a first blood for Mushi. Could not ask for a better start here on his Queen of Pain. He has skilled the blink first, so not 100% ideal, but that first blood gold is going to get him his second Null Talisman so quickly that I don't think it really matters. Yep, in a matchup as well, he'll be going up against the Lone Drew, which is a very hard matchup. Even if he were to get the dagger, it doesn't really help him that much in the lane since he'll be utilizing mainly the bear and his hero at the very back to last it. It is a bear favored matchup here, but looks like Ninja Boogie will be playing around the middle lane to try and secure him some uh, laning advantage in the first couple of creep waves. The problem about Sven is that you kind of need to get kills. He's a hero that you don't really tend to support the lane, you just run around, you try to get some bounty runes, try to get some levels off it, and try to get some kills with the heroes that you have. And the good thing is that they have really strong lanes. Mineski has a Dark Sea off lane, they have uh, a Gyrocopter as well, so he can really make kills happen. Yeah, and he doesn't really have to go and defend his safe lane at all. The Gyro plus the Jakiro should be able to put decent pressure onto the Saint King. And Ninja Boogie actually just coming up here and auto attacking Jesse Vash down, <laughs> not having a very fun time of things. Uh, I was a little bit surprised that Mushi actually got such a good block on the mid lane. I thought given that they chased the Lone Druid away, 
uh, he was going to get the far superior block, but Mochi actually doing pretty well here and even manning up to throw a few auto attacks towards Ben Hur, but you do see why this lane is considered not so amazing for the Queen of Pain. The, the damage of the Spirit Bear and the Lone Druid yep, really it, adding up. It does have a lot of kill potential as well. Once he gets the Druid at level 5, the Bear, if he does get lucky, he can get a solo kill if Mushi is a little low. But Mushi does have that head start with that kill. He's got the double null already in his lane. So he'll be able to last it very well. And Mushi is known for his Queen of Pain. He played so well. Even the game they lost just before, he played excellently well on this Queen of Pain. So Boogie lane. rotating in towards mid. Ben Hur going to get stunned up. And looks like with the Scream and a couple of auto attacks, they will be able to finish this. I mean, the only thing he could have hoped for there is maybe denying himself with the bear. But not even that opportunity presented. And Maneski going to get yet another kill on the board. So, looking pretty good in the early game here. Uh, and the one thing I really worry about for Happy Feet is I feel like this Chen just doesn't really have anywhere to play just yet. I haven't been paying too much attention to Jules, but you know, you're a Chen player yourself, so looking at this game, where do you think he has opportunities to make anything happen? Um, unlike Enchantress, Chen is more likely to just jump, get some levels, and then group up into one of the lanes and push. Obviously, it's more favored to gank now than it is to jungle lane as we saw a, a bottom lane kill by Ark. Well, I, I didn't see it but yeah, <laughs> the, the Sand King being brought down. Gyrocopter kind of flexing his muscles a little bit in this, this bottom lane. The, the Sand King off lane has not been so popular as of late. It's mostly been uh, played in position four, four and, right. yeah, and Happy Feet kind of taking the opportunity to pick up the Chen and put the, the Sand King in the off lane. But yeah, the two heroes that have been very commonly seen is the before was the Sand King as position 4 in the first phase pick. The Filipino teams love their Sand King, they love their park to do those dual lanes, strong aggressive dual lanes to control their enemy carry. But now we've been seeing a lot of Nyx, uh, mainly because there's been a lot of Batrider picks in this C regionals, and yeah. Nyx is a great counter utilizing his Carapace to stop them from kidnapping one of the heroes by Carapacing the Firefly when he does jump in. And there's been a lot of Intel mid heroes as well who get punished by Nyx's Mana Burn. And so as you can see here, the the lineup for the Happy Feet side, they are going to group up Witch Doctors peeping to the shrine. They might just potentially smoke, yep, and they're going to wrap around in the bottom lane and try to attempt to get a kill for the Sand King. Yep, but at the same time, mid Ben is in some big trouble. He does manage to get the roar away, still getting chased, however. Mushi, Blink, on cooldown for another couple of and seconds. And the so bottom lane here with yeah. the Satire Creep Jar try to dive in, but Sand yeah. King secures a stun and Jar will be going down. Yep, a couple more seconds, but don't even need the next Hadouken from the Satyr. Just auto-attack him down. Nice little bit of extra farm for Yaj here on the Sand King as he grabs himself a level 4. So, I mean, that would have been not so great for the Chen had they missed that rotation since he is already starting to... Well, he was only level 2 at the time, but secures the level 3, and his early game is at least looking decent, continuing to pressure down here. They do have a little bit of... Uh, they do have a ward over here uh, on the Mineski side, so it looks like... Even maybe knowing about that smoke, we're able to do too much about Nox it. Nox just secures the kill very easily with the Sven hasted. Yeah. No problem. Banking down again. Not a great start for him. He is getting pretty good CS though. 19 and 2 actually uh, tying things up with Gyre. the, the Gyrocopter right now. Yeah. So what kind of build are you anticipating that we see from the Gyrocopter this game? How early does he need BKB? Are we going to see Aghanim Scepter? What, what's your preference? Well, okay, so the very first time we saw the Gyrocopter being played top lane, though, Mushi going in, going to the Necro, attempting to TP out. There is no vacuum, so he will get away. But yeah, as you said before, um, Gyrocopter was played before when they had the Sven support as well. He did go for a very odd build that my, me, myself, kind of doubted a little bit. He went for the Hurricane Pike Rush, then a BKB, and he went straight into the Aghanims, which didn't really work out because he was lacking a lot of damage. But I don't think he'll be doing it this game as he needs to fight. So potentially we might see one item before he goes into the BKB, potentially a Dragonlance or even a Drums if he feels like he really needs to participate in every fight. But after that, he'll be building pretty standard items for the Gyrocopter. Do you think he considers the SNY at all? It is an item that, that has been buffed a little bit recently. I've seen some Gyrocopter players uh, picking it up. Or do you think the Dragon Lance is just kind well, of the same idea? The Dragon Lance just allows you to come online quicker than this SNY, whereas oh. SNY can help Stun on Jules. Fly Cannon doing good damage. The creeps are going to help and soak the rocket the barrage. Around though now. Yeah, they've got the Sand King coming in, but he's already used the Burst Strike, and Jules might get caught out in Jibuki's stun off cool in a couple of seconds, but actually not enough Mushi mana to use in. it right now. Oh man, Picking Mushi with the, the backstab. <laughs> Alright, nice. Mushi's been everywhere so far this yep. game. Rotating top. 
now making a kill over on the Chen. I mean, the Lone Druid is farming in the meantime, uh, so that's not going too amazingly, but... They uh, did help him out at the start, and the Lone Druid is quite behind. He's already used a few bears, he's already died, and now he's going to have to bring it back from the Fountain. Yeah, actually, Bear just coming off cooldown now. He is going to be going for a Midas, so pretty standard Lone Druid fare. You know, we don't really see the the ranged Lone Druid build anymore after it got completely gutted. Uh, Yo, Mag, we haven't really been talking about him that much. Uh, Darkseer doing pretty well, kind of as expected. Mag this is has a hero been playing very solid in this yeah. few tournament games. Yeah, this, this whole event has been really, really good for him. He is going to be just rushing a hood this game, it looks like. Uh, I mean, the pipe definitely going to be very valuable. Top they line. jump in, and oh, this is a double damage. No, not even on Wushi. He's just auto attacking Jesse Vash down. <laughs> he was hitting so hard, I thought he actually had DD, but never mind. Just a dominating streak picked up. Mushi insanely active on the squad, but I mean, his mid tier one tower is still barely taking any damage. The Lone Druid hasn't really been able to punish him for his absence because these rotations have just been so quick. He gets in, gets the kill, and then immediately gets back. And I mean, even in the meantime, Ninja Boogie soaking up some experience over on the mid lane. Yep, this is great, because this fan needs some time to, at some levels at least, so he can utilize his war cry and his stun, get some more damage, but the bottom lane here, uh, we haven't seen, we haven't really talked about Shakira that much. We did see one game being played recently, but it was a hero that kind of fell off. It was a very high contested pick at one point, and now towards the later stages of this uh, round robin stage, are, are we finally seeing some Jakira and it's having some success as well. Bottom lane though, there's going to be some action going on. Yeah, they've got the Necro TPing in as well. He does have the Scythe ready to go, but can they actually get enough damage onto this Gyrocopter? He's pretty fast, phase booting through into the trees. Yaj does have another burst Strike ready to go in just a second and looking to cut him off around the corner, but Gyrocopter still fogging them for the time being, gets the phase boots off one more time, and he's actually going to be A-OK. -okay. A somewhat wasted rotation from J.O. He has picked up a double bracer so far, so it looks like maybe going for a Rodovato's rush here uh, to help deal with the Darkseer and the Queen of Chain. Their mobility going to be shut down a lot by this item, but uh, how do you feel about this? Oh, Necro oh, actually in trouble go. here. The Shroud not going to help that much back. against the magical damage. The Sonic Wave coming through. He's still being healed up. They've got the Witch Doctor. Jesse Vash is going to be TPing out right now, and Gyrocopter sent forward Wishy with the Iron Shell. He's this though. He's still chasing down. There is no Shrine as well available. Go Shroud with the stick, gonna give him a little bit more life, but the screen finishes off. Mushi relentless with this haste rune, and now Jules, Jules also in trouble. in trouble. Couple more auto attacks to bring down the Chen. Mushi already unstoppable here. Eight minutes into the game, he's 6 0 and 0. This is. I thought it was the dream start with the first blood, but he has just taken that and run with it. And you were talking about the Jakiro before that action, all that action broke out, and I feel like we see a big part of the value of this hero. They've taken the enemy off lane tower before 10 minutes, which is something that we've actually seen a lot of safe lane heroes and a lot of uh, safe lane tri lanes struggle with in this current patch. Yep. Uh, so that extra gold coming in, they're going to get their hood a little bit faster, the, uh, the pipe I suppose coming out eventually for mag, and it feels like Happy Feet's lineup is already starting to maybe miss their timing. They haven't been able to get any rotations, they're just kind of getting picked off around the map, and the Chen is already starting to look like he might be falling off. You yeah, think I that's mean, the case? Chen is mainly a momentum hero. You want to get early towers, potentially a kill before the early tower happens, but he got one kill bottom. It didn't really secure much. I mean, the Gyrocopter was still farming. Sanking did have some good CS, but he mainly got that CS on his own. So we need to see some group up smoke rotations happening from a happy feet, get a kill with the side, and then push some towers. Yeah. Do, do you think that they feel like they just have to wait for the Radiance timing at this point? Like, have they missed their, their early game window, or is there still an opportunity here to go and move with the, the Scythe? Maybe the Blink Dagger timing for the Sand King is the other big thing to look out for. He's got 1k gold worth of progress. Unfortunately, being unable to take any of the Tier 1s, there's no acceleration for it at all, so he just has to kind of farm it the old-fashioned way. Yep, he is almost close to level 6 as well, so they might just wait for his Q levels to happen. And Witch Doctor is now starting to soak up some levels at the bottom lane since he's quite behind and just been helping our top lane. But I feel like they need to make a play. Yes, that they can wait out for the Radiance, but he's really very far away. Um, at best, maybe a 20-minute-ish Radiance timing. It will be too late. Speaking of making a play, some trouble for Jayu up top here. They're going to search Ninja Boogie in. They've got the call down coming in as well, and I don't know if Necro is going to be tanky enough to survive this. He's got the Strength Treads. He pops the Ghost Shroud, but that just means the Ion Shell chews him down that little bit faster. It's only the Witch Doctor rotating in to try and help out, and 
Jesse Vash going to be sent and packing. I love how this Kukira straight away TP top just to secure this tower. The hero is down, even if they cannot push on their own, get some damage going on there, and it's some very flexible damage as you just have to get one hit here and there. And there's, as you can see, Happy Feet smoked them around. Yeah. Trying to make they, play. they see Mushi at the mid lane, so they know that he can't really get up here to help. And they are going to try for this fight. They jump in, they're looking for the epicenter, but it looks like it is going to be cancelled and no damage from Yaj. Ark still getting burst. It looks like he will get scythed down, so good opportunity for Happy Feet here to run forward, defend this tower, and continue finding kills. Mag going to try for the TP, but Yaj going to find him, and this is going to be some really nice gold towards his blink. If they do manage to pick up this kill, the war cry is there, but the caustic finale enough to finish him off. And in the end, Happy Feet successfully defend their top tier one. Mid tier one also ends up surviving, yep. uh, despite Mushi pushing in there with a the double damage. And the great thing about this is the Sand King is really close to his blink there now. They must slow down a little bit, let him get his blink, and then after that, make some more plays with Foot. As right now, they do really su succeed in getting a tower. They did get the fight going their, their way, but they need to get some objectives at this point, while the Lone Druid just starts farming on his own for his Radiance. Yeah, and the Lone Druid is getting some decent farm. Ben has just been kind of hitting creeps this entire time. Uh, 1600 gold towards that Radiance so far. Ark looks like he is going to be going for the Sanjin Yasha build up here on the Gyrocopter. A little bit surprised to see that he's working towards the, the Yasha first. I feel like the yep. Sanj is actually pretty solid yep. on the Gyrocopter. And as you can see, Mineski starting to split up their heroes. Jakura always playing the off lane to try and get these tower damage going on with the Liquid Fire where Ark was just pushing the lane out in middle to force some rotations off Happy Feet to defend the middle tower. So therefore, the top lane was free. Both Mushi and Rio is that just heavily pushing the lane and forcing Happy Feet to show on the map so that they can't gain. Yeah, it's tough. They're getting restricted in their space. We got some nice wards from the Mineski side as well. And for Mineski, well, I guess one thing to talk about here is, is general game plan. Do you feel like if this game goes late, ha the Mineski are just happy to uh, or hap happy for the game to go long and just keep on farming, or do you feel like the gyrocopter exists on a little bit of a timer and they need to need to still make plays? I, I guess the the core of the question is, who do you think has the better late game here? Well, I think it can still go both ways depending on how the game progresses. But Mineski does have an edge here. They do have more team fight going on their way. They have the Darkseid vacuum wall. They have the Sven who scales quite well, especially if he does get some support items to go with it, like such as Halberd, Solo Crest. The bear will fall off quite late in the, to the game, but it's still okay with the Necro because they can turn fights around off the Scythe survive. Yeah, uh, the Scythe always going to be that big late game tool that gives them at least some kind of opportunity. J.O. giving up on the Rod of Atos for now, feeling like he's just getting bursted way too heavily by the magical damage. Is going to be looking for a hood. Happy Feet running forward. They are going to get the burst strike off onto the Sven. Mushi just around the corner. He's got a haster and he pops it off now. And Ninja Boogie just going to try and turn and fight. They get the back wall down onto the Necro, but not really a whole lot of follow up other than the Macro Fire, but he's still healing. On the other side of the fight, Mushi is going to get netted up. Unfortunately, there aren't any centaurs in this stack of creeps for jewels, so will not be able to lock him down any further, and it just ends up being some spells exchange. J.O. also in trouble now. Mushi still chasing forward. They do manage to get the ice path. It's not a particularly high level. The scythe gets thrown out just for a little bit of disable as the cask now bouncing out. Hand of God also going to be popped. Meanwhile, Ark and the Lone Druid are both just farming on the other side of the map, and it'll end up being zero kills overall. Yep, so y um, as you said, Ark is went for the Yasha first, he is accelerating his farm, he's not really participating in these fights right now because he doesn't really need to. Um, Gyrocopter could fight if they needed to defend these towers, but right now they are splitting up in two parties. Uh, Mushi and Ko are just starting to put pressure on the offensive side of the map while Ark is just jungling and protecting the towers that he needs to do so. Yeah, and Mushi going for a uh, well not a completely unusual item build here, but something that we don't see a lot of. The standard recently has been the Veil into Yules, into Lincoln's uh, Sphere as well. Yeah, into Lincoln's, but he's going for the, the Agadim Scepter. What do you make of this? Is it mostly just for clearing waves and killing Chen Creeps? Or? Yeah, majority is to keep his ulti uh, by most part up, and he's going to be participating in the fights more often than he would in the previous pop games. As you saw in the early stages of the game, he was just so active. It was top lane, it was bottom lane, it was everywhere, just killing everyone from the Happy Feet side. So he's going to be looking to go for a more active fighting role instead of going for more of a split farming late game role as Ark is playing the Gyrocopter he is not needed to do so. Yeah, so prioritizing some more farm, some more farm speed on the, the Gyro and the Queen of Pain going to be making the space and continuing to find the kills. 
Yaj running around up here. There is still this Radiant Observer Ward scouting things out, so I don't know if they're going to be able to get a kill. There's actually a DD on Mushi, so maybe some trouble for Jo. They're going to get the two-man Burrow coming in. Do they have the Reaper type? It's only level one. I don't know if that's going to be quite enough damage, and Mushi does manage to get the Blink away. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, they're also pressuring the bot. Ninja Boogie pops the Warcry and his ultimate. Which is just safe to get away. But yeah, they will be pushing bottom as well. The tower is quite low. Darkseer is also rotated down the bottom with the pipe now up. Goes with the wraparound here. Gonna be looking for the net. Does get onto the gyrocopter. Drops the defensive call down on top of himself. The Spirit Bear won't be able to close the gap. Yaj does come in with the burst strike. Can they close the gap? Looks like the Rod of Atos has already been used. They don't have the Reaper Scythe and the Warcry. Just getting them out of dodge. Ark just going to be TPing over towards the shrine. Yaj does manage to catch up onto the Sven, so it looks like Ninja Boogie at the very least is going to be losing his life. And Happy Feet might be able to segue this into a little bit of a push since this tier 1 tower down here is still standing. But a uh, decent fight. The Lone Druid's getting pretty close to his Radiant, so maybe that timing for Happy Feet still kind of on track since the Sand King's actually been playing really well after getting his Blink Dagger. That's right, and they'll be securing their tower at the bottom line, the very first tower they've gotten so far. And yeah, I mean, whoa, Yaj yeah. going down. Mushi. How many haste runes has Mushi got in I this game? I believe this is the third one now. <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous, but it's getting him some more farm. He's one component away from his Aghanim Scepter at this point. Uh, J.O. still, does he look like he might have that? Hood completed, or maybe not. Jo just went for the ASOS in the end of the day. Yeah. Just debating those cost yeah. with yeah. the item selection. Yeah, I mean, you, you change your mind. Everybody, you think, okay, I'm going to get the ASOS, then you get into a fight, and you get bursted by the Ion Shell and the Rocket Barrage, and you're like, screw it, I just need to survive. Yeah. Maybe his team tells him, look, we got the Hand of God. We're going to have the mech maybe before too long. Actually, Jules has got a, he's got a Vlad's queued up at the moment. He's gone for the Buckler, but... Interesting. Uh, yeah, is it may I mean, could be a misclick, but he maybe he's, oh, he's already got there the mech. Go, okay, yeah. yeah. All right, never mind. So they've got the mech, they've got the Hand of God, they've got ways to keep the Necrophos alive, uh, even without him having to buy that that hood. So yeah, it looks looking like right. they might be making a rotation soon. They do have the Atos, they do have the mechanism, they got the, the Blink ready as well, and Rad will be coming up any time now. So... This will be the timing of Happy Feet to try and get ahead. This is the timing that they need to just push down some towers or look for a kill and then take some towers. Yeah, and I mean, they really need it. These tier one towers still standing on mid over at top. This is a ton of room for the gyrocopter conti to continue farming up. Uh, Ark is going to fight back a little bit. His BKB is going to be coming up as his next item, but still going to take a little while to grab. Uh, it does have the SNY for a little bit of extra durability and mag. Uh, has already picked up the full pipe. He's had this Blink Dagger queued up for a little bit, but looks like deciding that they do want the magic resistance that little bit more. It's always going to be valuable against the... Know, even just the Lone Druid with the Radiant Spurn. Yep. Definitely very helpful. That's right. And here we go. Both parties are starting to group up. Uh, Minesky going towards the bottom tier 2, and Happy Feet smoked up. And they're going to do a nice wraparound. Hopefully they can get the back line of Mineski. They need to try and kill that Darkseer because he can reset the fight with his vacuum and pipe mech. Yeah, it's tough. Jules getting revealed. They're going to jump in. They get the burrow onto the secure. Not the most ideal target, but they will still take it. Will they use the scythe? They will. They get the vacuum into the wall. And now the sonic wave getting dropped down as well. But they've got the hand of God and the mech. Keeping everybody healthy. Jo heals himself back up to full HP. Yaj jumping forward with the epicenter. Looking to finish off the secondary support. And Ninja Boogie will be taken down. Mag. Unable to really reset the fight like you were talking about. He got a nice vacuum wall off, but uh, the burst combo is just wasn't not enough for Mineski. And it looks like Ark maybe wasn't even there. Uh, call down on cooldown. Yeah, just, yeah, just kind of hitting creeps. I guess waiting for his BKB timing more than anything. Don't sleep, don't eat, hit creeps. Yep, exactly. Happy feet. I mean, they win that fight, but it doesn't transition into an immediate push, which is a little bit concerning for them given that this Radiance is supposed to be the timing where they immediately go and take these remaining tier 1 towers. But it looks like they should still be able to pick themselves up yeah, and uh, head towards mid. they should be making their move. Yep, they're heading towards middle now. Let's get some tier 1 towers. Um, it will be pretty hard to miss this part now. They've jumped in. Stacking the disables a little bit. They've got the fear, but no roots. So Mushi sent packing over towards his base. We'll be able to blink away. He's got the Arcane Rune plus the Aghanim Scepter. So he actually has a lot to say about this push, potentially. 
Uh, but not going to be Sonic waving the, the wave just yet. Wants to fight, though. Yeah, they jump in, they've got the burrow, the call down now coming in as well. Yaj able to dodge that, they vacuum back Jo into the middle of this, but you have to remember, he's pretty tanky. Sonic wave coming through, looks like Jo is going to be brought down in just a second. Sonic wave also clipping the courier and happy feet. This is a really disorganized fight from them. Sand King, not enough mana to get off another burrow strike, so won't be able to keep any heroes alive. And Maneski with that. Completely defending their tier one tower. What what went so wrong there for Happy Feet? Uh, Jay was kind of in a very awkward position between the tower and the enemy. So, I mean, just mainly a positioning error that did not have epicenter, that did not have chance um, ultimate. So it was not really the right time. Yes, if they get a kill first, maybe if they potentially killed the Mush uh, Mushi before with one of the roots, then it would have been a great idea to do so. But they can't just head on push middle when they do not have their ultis up. Yeah, I mean, we saw the the power of being able to turn around to fight with the Hand of God and the mech in that previous fight, but didn't have it that time, and the air does get bursted down. He's still just going to be working towards a pipe right now, so a bit more survivability coming up. Uh, Lone Druid hasn't shown us exactly what his next item is going to be. If the Chen ends up picking up the Vlad, which it looks like he is going towards right now, what do you think the, the item for ben Hur should be? More or less likely, he should be building an AC, um, but yeah, as you said, Vlad's being picked up. Um, they would want to have a lot of auras. They need to have team fighting components to keep getting ahead. They do not want to drag this game out, especially since Ark went for this more farming orientated build. He will be completing his DKB soon, which will be a big problem since he won't be able to get hurt as much as Warcry is blocking most of the physical damage and DKB will block completely all of the magical damage. He's just going to be able to run into the middle of these fights. I mean, maybe they can get some trolls on the Chen to control him a little bit, but it's going to be pretty tough. Uh, do you think the Lone Druid gives any thought to picking up, like, a secondary pipe for the team? He does have the AC queued up here, but uh, I guess there's there's a mix of, like, pure physical and magical damage from Mineski, so you can't just itemize in one direction if you're happy feet and, and survive. And that's the beauty. Sonic Wave as well is pure damage, and he's got an Aghanim, so he's going to just keep spamming out his Sonic Wave. The thing is, it's going to be very hard to push into the Maneski lineup, not just because it's pretty easy for Bear to hit the buildings, but they can clear the creeps so quickly with the Jakiro's Macropire, with Sonic Wave even to just clear the lane and get some damage off. But as you can see, Maneski using his smoke here, wanting to fight, maybe even wanting to rush after fighting. So let's see what their decision is. Will they even just sneak into rush? Yeah. Nope. I mean, Happy Feet are about to show themselves top. The fact that they've taken out this Tier 2 tower is giving Mineski a lot of room to move on the map, being able to force Happy Feet back. And, you know, it oh, looked like we Happy Feet were keen to go and go and make something happen, but well, like you said, looks like straight into the Roshan they'll go. And I mean, this very nice lineup to do Rosh very quickly as well here. Yeah, and the Queen of Pain with the Aghanim Scepter Sonic Wave might be worth it to just give the Aegis to her. Could potentially get off two ultimates in a fight, and that would be completely devastating for, for Happy Feet. That looks like a Gyrocopter maybe lining up to grab it. All right, I, I thought maybe with the BKB yeah. uh, that they would give it to somebody else, but I guess he's going to be the one in the front lines hitting the buildings, so it makes sense to give it to him. Yeah, Mushi doesn't really have a um, defensive item. Normally, as you said before, he builds up the Yules, he builds up Lincolns. That's generally how Cops build up these days, but since he's been playing a more active role and building items to do more damage in the fight, so it makes sense for the Gyro to just get the Aegis, get in the middle of the fight, so Mushi has some sort of, some more space in these, in these freedom in these fights. Yeah, and, uh, happy Feet, they're still coming for a five-man push over towards this tier one tower. They do see Mag down at bottom, but he's got a TP ready to go, and he is going to come in and join his team in just a second. Looks like they will end up sacrificing the tier one tower, Mushi blinking up onto the high ground as they will pop the glyph and continue to move into position, but now they jump in with Mag, they've got the vacuum, they are going to try and burst down the Necrophos, will they be able to? Yeah, it's count initiating a little bit. Do they have enough heals to keep this Necrophos alive? He needs a Reaper Scythe to connect. He's going to try for it on the Gyrocopter, but it's not enough damage, and Ark, unconcerned because of the Aegis, they continue chasing forward. Don't Mass DP is attempted by Happy Feet, who can they actually find? They're going to stack the Disables a little bit and only get the Witch Doctor. Yep. Fortunately, Ben-Hur will be able to TP himself out, but... Happy Feet, do they just feel like they're running out of time? They're fighting into the Aegis at this point of the game. 
Yeah, unfortunately the, the Necro is getting aimed. And he has to be in the front with the bear. He needs to heal. He needs the aura to do damage. But at the same time, even with all the heals, he just can't soak all of them. There's just too much damage coming from the Maneski side. Even this Sven now has a blink. He can be the one initiating as well to set up for the Macro Pipe, to set up for the so Sonic Wave like he just did last fight. So it's going to be kind of hard for Happy Feet to regain their footing unless they try to get some pickoffs with that Sanking Blink Dagger. Yeah. Do you feel like Happy Feet got kind of blindsided by the support Sven this game? It feels like they kind of picked the Necro in some ways to help deal with the idea of a Sven core, but not nearly as potent against the Gyrocopter this game, it feels like. Yeah, I mean, they must have seen Mineski do this before. They've done it two or three games now in this uh, group stage. But at the same time, when you saw the Sven, you see Darks, you see Queen of Pain and Jakiro, you might just be thinking, yeah, this is a great Sven carry game. But they just didn't go, go for it. As you saw, Necro pick, they just switched the role, made it a support, picked Gyrocopter, who is perfect against Necro. Yeah, and I'm in Happy Feet, they just need to... I think the big problem is that they just haven't been able to burst anybody, you know. If, they, if they'd actually been able to maybe sit there and channel a Death Ward, get a Scythe off to start the fight, then things might be looking a little bit different, but the Darkseer with his mech and the pipe making it very, very difficult for the Reaper Scythe to kill off anyone. Feels like the Lone Druid already starting to... I mean, th the Radiance is his biggest power spike. E everything after that is nice, but he's never going to be... You know, as strong as he was just a couple of minutes ago where the bear was nigh on unkillable and the Radiance burn was very difficult to deal with. So, Happy Feet, do you, do you see any way back into this game for them? Or is, th is there always that Necrophos potential with the Scythe? Or yeah, is this slipping away from them right now? They just can't head on fight. There's no way they will be able to win a fight anymore unless they get a pick off before that happens. But yeah, they're going to get caught out here. Mushi finds him. They've got the Yule to cancel a TP, but I don't even know if he's going to try and go for it. They also get the jump in from Ninja Boogie. He uses the ultimate. Ryer will be able to take him down. They've also got a Yule's up on the Jakiro, so more ways to control these fights, more ways to keep the Necro locked down after he pops the Ghost Shroud. And uh, happy feet. I mean, like you said, it seems like they just have to kind of split push this game out. Maybe they get to some kind of a point where they can get an Aghanim Scepter on the Lone Druid, but, I mean, looks like Mineski not even going to give them that opportunity. They are just charging straight towards mid. There is a buyback available for Benher, so it looks like it might get forced out here. And he actually just ends up buying some items, relying on his team to defend this. They do have a Glyph, so maybe they can get him back up. Yep, and they're going to have to start. They cannot just let Ark push this. He does have ADs, he does have BKB, but if you're just going to let him chip down the tower, then eventually he'll be your racks down. And he's still got the Aegis as well. He's still got the 10 second BKB, in fact. Hasn't been forced to use that. That's the benefit of having this Aegis. They're going to jump in. They do get the first strike under the gyre, yeah, helping to keep J.O. alive. Are they sending him back? Looks like they might be trying to, but actually unable to do so. And a couple more auto attacks will bring him down. He's dead for 50 seconds. The Lone Druid respawning soon, but they've already taken the tier 3. They lose the bonus armor. Ark still just getting healed up by his team. They've got those urns coming in, and that's going to be the first lane of Rax. Taken by Maneski. Nice blink away from Mag, avoiding the cast coming through, and Mushi also able to make his escape as Happy Feet will be unable to catch even a single hero. Now, Maneski just going to go on to this shrine, finish that up. They and still have the Aegis too. They could just heal up. Shrine up. Oh, no, it's fine. gone. It's now gone. it's gone. <laughs> That's all right. They, they didn't get, okay, so they even got some wards down over on the Happy Feet side of the map. It, it's feeling like we're getting to the point where maybe they just buy a gem, claim complete map control, farm up an e a even bigger lead, and then just kind of look to end the game. Yeah, but they don't have to, Man, Mineski doesn't have to rush the game. I mean, as you said, just control the games, get the items that they're close to getting, and Rush will be spawning in four minutes relatively, and they can just wait for that and just close the game up. Not looking easy. Jakiro even going to be going for a Blink Dagger here. Uh, of all items, Ninja Boogie just picking up a drum. Nice little yeah, utility for his team. a little bit of team. trouble here. Bottom lane. There is some rotations coming to half feet, so they decide to back off. But Yaj goes in, gets stunned, stuns Can the they gyro. change stun the gyro? He can get the BKB off here, and he will use it now. Call down getting dropped in. Jesse Vash coming around the corner. They will be able to get the Maldic off onto a couple, but the vacuum into the Sonic Wave is huge. The flat cannon tearing everybody else apart. Ben Hur trying for the TP out in the trees. But they get the vision, they've got the Yules, and it looks like he's also going to be brought down. A little bit of a Hail Mary play for I Happy Feet. I love Mineski, they're killing the bear first before they kill the hero, so they get that extra Easy gold, gold. XP. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, and Mineski really, really strutting their stuff here. I think they had a little bit of a slow start in these qualifiers overall. Day one, yeah. not the most impressive for them, but looks like they really hit their stride here in, in day two. And uh, I mean, with this win, looking pretty solid to, well, assuming that they win this game, you know, looking pretty solid to have a spot in the playoffs and still continue on that road to Seattle. Top lane now will be decision to go by Maneski and if we see a decision now coming up from the Dark Pop is just to remove the Ghost Shroud from Necrophos. Yeah, not going to be fun for Jo. He's already not been survivable enough in these fights and losing one of his big defensive tools is not going to help. We do have a Glyph available. Looks like they might be able to get their Lone Druid back up and in the mix, but Ark just sitting on the front lines, tanking up everything. Joel's doing his best with the Wild Wing. It's actually going to get Tornadoed itself to Cancel the well, it was canceling the Mineski blinks, which is pretty annoying for Mag. So, nice little play there for Mineski as they do clean up this tier three tower. And looks like, like you were saying earlier, there's actually just no rush for them right now. They can turn this 18k gold lead into whatever they want, you know, even 40k, and then end the game. They don't have any more games to play after this, so may as well close this one out the right way. That's right, they were, they, I mean, in the first day, they weren't looking that strong. Um, they were trying out some brute strategies played by Mag. They won one, they lost one, but not very successful with it. Um, they did some switcher route, the Sven pick up first, uh, first pick, but right now, day two, they're really on a roll here, winning most of their games and securing close to a top four playoffs round. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to look at the, the brackets after the, well not brackets, but the standings after yep. this match. Um, for Happy Feet, do, do you think like there was, do you think there was anything that they could have done differently with this draft, this game? Do you think maybe the Chen could have played towards the mid lane or I the off lane Chen, a little bit more? Yeah, definitely the off lane. The Chen could have been playing with the Sankey. It was a dual lane. Ninja Boogie did live the lane. He started off middle, went towards the top lane to kind of help out, zone out the Witch Doctor, uh, put less trouble on the Darkseer lane. But if the Chen had started bottom, he would have forced Ninja Boogie to rotate bot to help him out. And I mean, Sanking Chen is a deadly combo. He gets one creep, one stun, can get enough damage to kill that Gyrocopter or Jakira, whoever's out of position. But he just farmed a little bit and then started doing the movement, which is not too good because he can secure the Sanking a really good start and stop the Gyro from just free farming. Yeah, I think he got a little bit unlucky with the creeps as well. Started with the Centaur, not ideal. Would have really loved to have the uh, the Satter. They do manage to find Mushi over here. Do they have the Chainstone to bring him down? No, he gets the Yules off, and now the Call Down's coming in. They Whoa. back in everybody, back into the wall. The Sven is cleaving what little bit he can. He's not a core. They are going to drop the Scythe onto Mushi, but it's not enough to kill him. Jesse Bash channeling his Death Ward in the middle of all of this. Yaj, nice, nice ultimate, center. getting off some good damage, but Mag still too survivable with the pipe. And the Guardian Greaves, only one for one thus far, so still looking decent for Happy Feet, as they will continue pursuit over onto the Gyro. There aren't any teammates here backing him up, uh, but he is still pretty fast. The Rod of Atos keeping him locked down. But <laughs> and we don't even have the Jakiro coming over here. He's just running over towards top. Time to rat. We have Ryo on the full rat path. And he does have a Yules and a Blink Dagger to be able to escape, so he gets a bit of damage onto the melee barracks, and away he goes, but... I mean, one of the first teamfight wins that we've seen for Happy Feet so far this game. It was an amazing vacuum, but there was just no heroes to really back him up. Mushi was the one getting caught, so he had to blink out. He wouldn't be able to get his combo off. And also, the other two heroes, Jaro and Jakira, was just not in position at the time, so he, they could not really follow up on that vacuum. Although it looked insane. Four-man hero vacuum, I, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not an amazing game for the illusions, either. That's the other thing. The, <laughs> you know, a wall illusion of a Necrophos or the Lone Druid hero is, right. is not so amazing. So Mag, unfortunately, not contributing that much damage. Somebody that is doing damage is Mushi, picking up a beyond godlike streak here, as he will finish up. Jules took him a little while. He had six kills in, like, less than nine minutes. Uh, and now he finishes off the last four uh, at 34. But very impressive game. For Mushi and it's definitely you know. a hero to watch out for when versing against Mineski. Uh, he's just been getting the Queen of Pain way too much, and his Queen of Pain is insanely good. As he's shown, as even the games they've lost when he has play been playing Queen of Pain, he just does a tremendous amount of work. Yeah, and I mean, Queen of Pain, a hero that a lot of teams are really favoring this patch. Newbie picking it a lot for SCCC, EG for Sumail, uh, and now Mushi kind of. You know, reminding us that he's also a star Queen of Pain player, and he's actually probably been playing it for even longer than, than either of those two That's players. That's right. Since Dota 1, he's walked yeah. off three days.
He's been around forever. And Minuski, we said they were going to take it slow. They come in. They do take out the Roche. They have picked up a gem over on the Sven, so able to deny Happy Feet map control. They don't actually check up on this high ground, so this Observer Ward is going to be sticking around a little bit longer. But unfortunately, Happy Feet having to tend to their lanes can't really come out and contest. So we now have yet another Aegis on the Gyrocopter. We have a Cheese and a Hex this time around on the Queen of Pain. And this next push should be... Oh, I mean... Should be Mineski getting close to ending the game, but Happy Feet, the coordination has been picking up a little bit in these last few fights. Unfortunately, the, the next round of items doesn't seem crazy impactful, though this Reap, uh, the Aghanim Scepter on the Necrophos and hitting level 18 could actually be a very big deal. That's right. I mean, all they really need is to get one good Scythe on one of the key heroes that does not have the Aegis, so not on the Jarakop, maybe on the Queen of Pain or, or the Darkseer or whatnot. But as you can see, Mineski is now rotating top lane, smoked up. They will maybe find Sank. Nope, they just completely backed off. Rior is now starting to push the lane out. And J.O. is going to get stunned up. Call down coming in as well. They're going to hex him up. No opportunity to go strap. Nice force staff from Yaj, but can they actually get him out of here? They've got Back the heal. In. Back wall. He's still trying to escape. They've still got even more heals. J.O. tanking through everything. Can he and turn around for a scythe? Up. Yeah, the BKB actually being a little bit wasted from Ark Empty here. Center, though. Not Ep hitting anyone. Uh, yeah, just blinking forward, but won't be able to get anything. Ryo still on this rat plan <laughs> over on the top lane. He does actually manage to force out the Glyph and get the blink away. All right, nice Great little play. play from him. But every little damage matters in the end. Yeah, but that does not bode well for Mineski. They go in there with the Aegis, they go in there with the Cheese, they go in there with the Hex, and... They yeah. don't make any progress. They didn't really get anything out of it, but as well, they didn't really lose anything. Um, the epicenter is down, so they might think to go back up there. The Queen of Pain's ulti yeah. is Aghanim's ulti, so it's going to be up now. Um, just the wall is 40 seconds off. And here we go. As I said, they're going to smoke up, attempt another play. Just the insane amount of fuel stove displayed by Happy Feet's lineup in the last fight was crazy. Yeah, that yeah. That's alive. Oh. They're controlling the spirit bear That's for the, the time only one, being. But he does not have another bear. That could be trouble. They've got the call down coming in as well. Yaj being controlled. They vacuum everybody in. They got the cleave. They've got the flat cannon. Ben Hur in trouble. One more auto attack from Mushi. Should do it. Gets the uphill miss, but Mushi just blinks forward. And one last scythe, but not going to kill off the co-op as Mineski now lay claim to the Happy Feet base. Age is still intact. Still have the cheese ready to go. And uh, Mineski, where are you guys going? <laughs> they, they just, what I'm wondering. They just walked away from this lane <laughs> There's of no rats. creeps, that's oh, okay, yeah. backdoor protection was still up, yeah. okay. All right, all right, Mineski. So, there you go. 40 seconds on the respawn for Happy Feet. No buyouts coming out from both Lone Druid and Necro. They don't have the gold, and even if they did, Lone Druid does not have his Spirit Bear up yet, so it wouldn't make much sense to buy out regardless. So, I mean, yeah, he's got an epicenter in one second's time. He's probably going to throw one last ulti out. Maybe, but I mean, Mag has both the the pipe and the greaves off cooldown. Mushi's just throwing sonic <laughs> waves and creep waves. And yeah, happy feet. I believe that this is their last match in the. Yep, these are the last so. match, so. Oh, here we go. Some Filipino trash talk. Oh, God, <laughs> Who knows? I, I, I think these two teams are pretty friendly with yeah, one they another. Are. They know each other for a very long time now. Even some of the, the Happy Feet players, former Mineski players, they will drop out one last epicenter, but as we can see, it's not really doing that much damage. Deo just wants one winning scythe, but it's not even going to happen. The throne explodes, so that is going to be Mineski claiming a win, making a very good case for themselves here as they, try, as they move towards the playoffs for the TI7 SEA qualifier. And yeah, just looking really good. Like we said, shaky day yeah, one, but really, really good day two. I must expect a lot from them in the playoffs now, um, but I guess the casters, uh, the panelists, will be looking at the standings anytime afterwards, and we'll see what the it's shaping up like. Yeah. Do you have an MVP for the game for Vanessa? I think Mushi. Mushi. Definitely. All How right. much work did he did in early game? Okay, so we're gonna send it back to our panel, and we'll see if they agree. Thank you so much, Basecape and Godot. Guys, you heard them. What is the question? Who is the MVP of the match? He's gonna put I think, I think it's Mineski. Oh, uh, Mineski cannot be MVP of the match. You have to, <laughs> you have to give me the name of the player. Like, he's gonna go after uh, Godot. Definitely, I think I agree with the caster. Yeah. Okay, Mushi. All right, yeah. what about you, Pinda? All of them. All of them? Yeah. You can't say that. 
They're, they're awesome. All right, fine, fine. You want to go with that? Sure. All right, we're going to take a look at the highlights of the previous match that we just watched together. So you guys can explain to me what actually happened because most of yeah, the game um, was one-sided. We saw that Happy Feet couldn't really pull their uh, strategy together. So what went wrong? I wouldn't say like one-sided. Everything is but wrong. Everything is wrong? <laughs> what do you mean everything is wrong? I mean, it's from the drop, at, from the drop, you said, it's, uh, like I said before, how they're going to kill Queen of Pain. You can see there's a lot of time Queen of Pain um, almost died, but she Didn't can run die. away. <laughs> she can run away and come back and kill everyone. So, yeah, but uh, besides Mushi, I think Mac is do doing very well with the Dark Sphere. Yes. Yeah, we can that see a lot of combo happening. And Dark Sphere has been uh, a pretty good pick. No, it's it's like this one support was, it was really good, like uh, Godot. Predicted, I mean, he saw it coming, like the Sven support. It's great that they had like so much armor with the war cry on Sven. It's great for the team fights, right? And Jakiro, Ice Path, like the follow up, it, they had the right follow up. But there were like some fights where, um, like, the Storm Hammer was used early and they, the vacuum was used later on. So I think there was a bit of a miscommunication right there. I think with the fight will come out in eventually. And from the half feet, half feet on the other hand, other hand, they had like a lot of survivability items like the greaves and a lot of health, uh, health coming from heal coming from Necrofus and um, not to forget the hand of God from uh, Jen. So they were. This is this is when they like. There's a perfect vacuum, and this is when Sven uses his storm uh, hammer earlier. But yeah, happy feet. They had the survivability, but on the other hand, it's just like the fights. They were surviving, but they couldn't really make. Um, like make fights work in in their side, like how they wanted to. I guess. All right. And the thing is, I'll, although I mentioned that it was a one-sided game, we did see towards the end, Happy View was uh, winning some of the team fights. Now I want to know, even though they did, they still had a chance. They still had a chance at winning. Why Don't, didn't they? No, I wouldn't say they had a chance at winning. They don't have the no, chance I, to win. I mean, basically, it's just it's just like uh, Mineski is overdo it. And then give uh, a, a bit opportunity of Happy Feet to kill some of their heroes because they already used all their spell, their ultimate. So it's a, it's a chance. But Happy Feet didn't get any a big comeback after that. Uh, even though Minisky lineup is pushing more than they should uh, because they are, they are thinking that it's definitely they're going to uh, win because, the, because of the draft and because how how they're landing. So basically, everything just went wrong with Happy Feet this, in this game. In the beginning, I, I felt like they were like kind of trolling around, but uh, later on, it's like they really, I think they were giving it all. They were really serious about the game. Um, they went for the bear build. Uh, so they were, I think they were hoping for like, I don't know, push later game or something like that. Like they definitely were like surviving a lot. They were prolonging the fights so much, but uh, just Minuski had the upper hand in all the fights. So all they had to do was just Keep pushing, that's it. All right, thank you guys so much. Coming up next, we're going to have Faceless going up against Geek Fam. Now, we've seen both of these teams play today. We've seen them play on day one. What do you guys think we can expect from both of these teams? I mean, it's this, it's like the same with Minetsky with the Happy Feet, where Happy Feet already have no chance to qualify. And Geek Fam also already, basically, they already knock out. Uh, so, but. You know, when Malaysia versus Singapore, they like to disturb, I mean, to make the other team feel... Uh, tilted? Tilted. So maybe g wants want to steal one, one win from Faceless. And, and yes, that could affect Faceless' score as well. I mean, if Faceless lost to g Fan, they may be in fifth, number fifth. Yes. So they will probably need to meet at the Faceless or Fnatic, which is not a good opponent for the playoff. Uh, so... I think all teams want to avoid the top two teams for now. Definitely. Pinda, what about you? You mean... Geek Fam and Faceless. Yeah, um, I think Faceless will... Faceless is showing up their... Um, their the team. strengths, yeah. yeah. No, um, they're slowly coming, but it's, it's a bit too late. But still then, they need to uh, maintain the top... I mean, they need to secure the slot in the top four so that they can play, uh, play in the playoffs. So, I, I'm going to... You have to make up like, your mind. Yeah, it's, you it's have really to make hard. it up. Like, Geek Fam is a really good team as well. And do you want to leave? Do you no, want to leave I'll the prediction for, for later? We can yeah, leave it for, yeah, later. for later. All right, sure. We'll go for a short break, and when we come back, it's going to be faceless going up against Geek Fam. Don't go in.